I turn a basic grocery store cake into a hyper-realistic cake? I've done this once before when I made this sandcastle cake, and I think it turned out all right. But that sandcastle is one of my easier cake designs. So today, I'm gonna up the difficulty level from easy to extreme challenge. I'm going to choose an object at the store that I know is gonna be really difficult to make in cake. And to make it extra hard, I'm only gonna use supplies that are available at my local grocery store. Am I gonna be able to pull this one off? We're about to find out. My name is Natalie Sidesurf and I make cakes that don't look like cakes. And today I'm going to turn a basic grocery store cake into a hyper-realistic cake. I'm at the store and I have no clue what I'm gonna make. Whenever this happens to me, I go right to produce. There's gotta be something interesting here that I haven't made yet. Oh, oh, what are those? Yellow dragon fruit. Oh, they have regular dragon fruit too. So many of you have asked me to make this and I've been avoiding it because I know it's gonna be really hard. Dare I say difficulty level extreme challenge. It's perfect. I'm gonna make a hyper-realistic cake of a dragon fruit. The next thing I need is a cake from the bakery because I'm turning one of these babies into a dragon fruit. This one here looks like a good size. A little bit of condensation, never hurt anybody. Black forest cake, you're coming with me. There is something that I know I'm gonna need in order to make this dragon fruit cake. It's something that's not sold at your typical grocery store. It's a specialty item that I usually order online. But the rule today is that I can only use supplies available at my local grocery store. So that means I'm gonna have to make it. All I need is light corn syrup and white candy melts. That's all I'll need to make modeling chocolate. Let's have a look at the food color options. This little package has some variety, not even close to as many options as I have in my cake studio, but I'm working with what they've got. As far as brushes, this is it. These are pretty small. <laughs> this cake's gonna take some time to paint. I definitely need a rolling pin. It's a small one, but I can work with it. And finally, they are sold out of sculpting tools. How am I gonna sculpt a cake sculpture without sculpting tools? This is not good. I gotta think of something. And the only thing that I can think of right now is Plastic cutlery? Oh boy. I'm gonna have to sculpt this cake with a spoon, a fork, and a knife. Speaking of knives, I'm gonna buy a real knife because I'm worried that I'm gonna have to cut some things with more than just a plastic knife. And if I don't use it, well, I don't know, at least I'll have a new knife. <laughs> I'm back in my studio and now all I have to do is turn this into this. I might be a little in over my head. I'm gonna be honest, I'm feeling a little intimidated. <laughs> Let's just get started. I need to scrape the icing off this cake and I did not buy an offset spatula, which is what I would use to do this. I consider an offset spatula to be a specialty tool. So I'm using one of my trusty plastic knives. <laughs> Already off to a great start, I forgot something. Let's just hope I didn't forget anything else. Now that I've scraped the buttercream off the cake. Let's make some modeling chocolate. It has been a while since I have made this stuff. In the past, I have been known to mess this up, but I'm gonna try really hard not to do that today. <laughs> I'm measuring out a third a cup of corn syrup, and I'm gonna pour it into one pound of melted candy melts. This is where it can get tricky. I am going to fold the chocolate until the clear corn syrup is completely mixed in. If I don't mix it enough, I'm gonna have hard chunks of chocolate in my modeling chocolate. So I gotta be sure to stop mixing right when it comes together, which is right about here. If I mixed it too much, the oil in the chocolate can can separate. Then I'd end up with this super greasy, oily modeling chocolate. I can't work with that. I think this looks all right. I'll know for sure once it's cooled down. Let's cut this cake in half. I can already tell that this cake is gonna be really, really hard to work with. What am I doing trying to use this plastic knife when I bought this? Turns out I am gonna use the real knife. That plastic knife was tearing this cake up. Now it's not the cake's fault. It's just that the texture of this cake is incredibly crumbly. It's moist, it's delicious, it's fluffy. The problem is it's too fluffy. Husband Dave bakes all the cakes that you see on this channel and he uses a very specific recipe and technique that results in a very dense cake, a sturdy cake, which is exactly the texture you want your cake to be if you're gonna sculpt it. It holds its shape well. This grocery store cake does not hold its shape well. I think that sometimes when people try to sculpt a cake for the first time, they don't consider the texture of the cake. They just use whatever cake's available. If it's hard for me to sculpt this cake, it's gonna be really hard for somebody who's just doing it for the first time. If you wanna try your hand at cake sculpting, make a cake using the reverse creaming method. That's how we do it. I've been sculpting cakes for, I don't know, like 13 years or something, so I think I can pull this off. It's just more difficult than it usually is. 
Let's go back to that modeling chocolate I made. I didn't mess it up. It looks good. It's really hard right now, so to soften it, I'm kneading it. This white is a little too white, so let's have a look at our food color options that we bought at the store. I'm impressed by this little package. There are a lot of colors here. Not bad for a grocery store. Now that I've dropped each of the colors at least once, let's open them up. I want to color the modeling chocolate yellowish ivory, so I am going to start by mixing in some yellow. The yellow by itself is really vibrant. To bring down the intensity, I'm adding just a a little bit of purple. Purple and yellow are complementary colors. The purple helps make the yellow more ivory. And I'm gonna add a little bit of orange for good measure. My modeling chocolate is made. It's the color I wanted, so let's use it. I am so happy that I purchased a rolling pin. If I forgot to buy a rolling pin at the store, I have no clue how I would have pulled this off. <laughs> but I've got my rolling pin. What a relief. So now I'm gonna cover my chilled cake in modeling chocolate. You know, this is actually going pretty well. So far, I've had all the items that I've needed to make this cake. I've had no issues with the modeling chocolate. The food color is totally working out. I didn't forget a rolling pin. Now I get to do what I do best, sculpt the cake. Oh, that's right. I don't have any sculpting tools. I have to sculpt this cake with plastic cutlery. Do you wear clothes or know someone who does? Well, get yourself some more by heading over to shop.sidesurfcakes.com. That's where you can get some Sidesurf Cake Studio clothes. We also have coffee mugs, stickers, beach towels, all kinds of stuff. I'll put a link below so you don't get lost on your way to the store. And now back to the cake. Holy moly, I don't know how this is gonna work out for me. For real, this is it's kind of ridiculous. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. This would be hard with sculpting tools. The first thing I'm gonna try is to blend the chocolate with the spoon. And I already broke it. Good thing I have a whole package of cutlery. Let's try out this knife. Seems like my best option to create a hole in the top. That worked better than I thought it would. Now I need to add some texture with something pointy, but not four prong pointy. So I'm snapping off the prongs until I'm left with one. Hey, look, this ain't bad. <laughs> Let's try to add some texture. Now this doesn't look great, but it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. But the reality of my situation is I need it to look great. If it doesn't look great, it doesn't look hyper-realistic. I can't forget that today's challenge is to turn a grocery store cake into a hyper-realistic cake. Not just, you know, a cake that looks kind of realistic. I'm excited to make these like little petals that come off the dragon fruit. I'd say that they're the most predominant feature of the dragon fruit. They're the thing that's gonna make this dragon fruit look like a dragon fruit. So I really gotta get these right. I'm sculpting each one by hand because my sculpting tools really weren't very much help with these. Probably because a spoon, a fork, and a knife are aren't actually sculpting tools. For the petals on the side of the fruit, I'm slicing right into the modeling chocolate that's already covering the cake. Because the outside petals aren't quite as long as the top ones, I still can't get over the fact that I'm sculpting a cake without sculpting tools. <laughs> Sometimes you're just in a situation where you've gotta work with what you've got. And because this is harder to do, I'm learning a lot. Just as important as the shape of the dragon fruit is the color. And none of these colors say dragon fruit pink. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to make it. Gonna have to mix these colors until I find the proper pink and yellow and green. And you know what I just remembered? I have to use the paint brushes from the store. The brushes are totally fine. It's just that none of them are very big. They're the size that I would use to do detail work. But I gotta work with what I bought. Those are the challenge rules. The pink right out of the container is too light. I'm adding a little bit of red to deepen it, and I think that's what it's gonna take to make dragon fruit pink. So now I'm gonna cover all the pink areas of the dragon fruit with my tiny paintbrush. One brush stroke at a time. Today's cake challenge has taught me that the next time I make a cake and I don't have specific specialty tools available, I'm confident that I can still find a way to make it work. No modeling chocolate? Make it from scratch. No sculpting tools? Grab a spoon. You only have tiny paintbrushes? Just be patient and take your time. <laughs> and now, the question that I have for you is, does this cake look like a real dragon fruit? Was I able to turn a basic grocery store cake into a hyper-realistic cake? And there you have it, a dragon fruit cake. This has been quite the cake challenge. I was right when I said a dragon fruit cake is an advanced cake. This was a hard one. I'm so happy that I did this cake challenge today. What do you guys think? Should I do more challenges like this? All right, let's cut the cake. Yay, now I get to eat the cake and the real dragon fruit. <laughs> if you like this video, subscribe to this channel. I post a brand new cake every week and I'll see you next week for another cake.